Hi again. So let us continue from our introduction of Pix here. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to let you have an idea on what each of these functions are one at a time. Okay. Let's start with the uh, the colors, the palettes. Okay. Now you your palettes have uh, four columns and several rows over here. Each of them serves a different function, and each of them has different colors to choose from. Okay. You notice the color bars over here, these are more solid colors. So if per se you want to pick any color you like, you can just simply draw them as is. Okay. To pick a color, you just need to uh, click on it if you're using a mouse, or you just dot on it using a graphic tablet. Depends on which one you want to use. Okay. You probably notice two things under the bars over here. One is mark T and one is mark D. T would be your tone value. Okay, to make this more visible, I'm going to use the darker color. Let's pick a blue. This is what your color blue looks like at 100% of your tone value. If you make some adjustments, say I'm bringing it down to 47, you'll notice some significant difference in the color of your tone. So if per se I'm bringing it really low, like 20%, you get really light tones over here compared with the solid color at the 100 value. For T, T for D, D is distal functions. So if I lower my distal value right here, you probably see effects like crayon effects. So this is what your result will look like. Combine, do some adjustment on both, you probably get very different results like this, where you can see the darker shade is right here and the lighter shade is right here. So that's pretty much how you use it on uh, your canvas. right? You also notice in Pixia, in row 3 in particular on uh, part 1, row 3, you notice some uh, brush, uh, how to say, the colors looking like this. Usually when we pick a color, we just simply draw it like that, okay? But if I say you pick one of these, you might get some respond looking like this. Let's click this one. It will ask me, should I use this image as tip of the pen? So if I select yes, this is what it looks like. If I select no, this is what it looks like. For Now if you are drawing a doujin or you are creating a manga and you want to do skin tones, this is probably the one you would like, rather than this. So you have three options to choose. And you can mess around with it if you want to. Okay. Now if you're selecting some of these uh, different background colors, they're just going to fill it as is, or you can just hit the fill bucket over here and give a full background. These are very common backgrounds that you can choose to your liking. And some of them you can create really great backgrounds with this. Row, num uh, row number two, you have some of the more solid colors. Row number three, you have uh, gradient colors. And the one that marks G is gradient itself. Now, before I continue, you probably notice something is missing from the icons over here. Uh, yes, the one that's missing is the eyedropper, or in other words, the color selection tools. So, if I say you want to pick a color that you want to adjust from the wheel over here, and you don't, you don't find it, and you can always customize it by hovering your cursor. I'm going to pick this one because this one is easiest to understand, okay? Now if I'm going to hover it, what I do is I just select right click and you can see the color being selected, right?
let us look at the gradient tools. Now the gradient tools, you would notice some of the vertical lines and the arrows over here. These are here to help you to do the adjustments. So if I say for this gradient, I want to adjust a more of the shades like this rather than this, I can just do so. It's here to help you do your adjustments. Or you can just select one of these options. Just mess around with it and see which one is you personally like, okay? And you can also preview the angles from here as well. Now if I say vertical gradient is not your thing, you want it to look something more like this. You can also do this as well. And better yet, you can also select any color you want from the wheel and just select the boxes. You can also adjust the angles to make it different. And once you're done looking for something you like, you just hit the fill bucket and then you get your pretty gradient backgrounds right here. So basically that's how it does. And if you want these effects, here's the Disney effects. Okay? If you don't want the Disney effects, just click this little box right here. And you can choose whichever you want. So for the gradients, uh, this is all I can teach you for now. The next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use this part. Alright? Okay, see you.